Welcome to Impact Duty. I'm your host, Manisha Dadlani Kriplani, bringing you empowering stories of friends and people I admire. Their voices have given me joy and the momentum to share their stories with you. Anvisha is a woman known in the food space for her creative and healthy dips, sauces, and recipes. She co-authored the cookbook, The Millennial Kitchen, with her daughter, Mira, with easy-to-make recipes. She believes in clean eating and hopes to inspire the next generation to eat clean. Stay strong, be calm, and always choose love is her message for us. Tanvisha, welcome to Impact Duty. How are you doing? Hi, very well. Thanks, Manisha. Super Looking excited cool. to be on, on, on a podcast with you. And for the first <laughs> time with full skin peeling, full tan, straight from <laughs> Africa. Well, thank you for joining me, Tanvi. I know you just got back on uh, from a trip um, and you look gorgeous, regardless, regardless of the tan. It, in fact, that's added to your glow. So I've been looking forward to our chat. Um, and I'm going to ask you to tell our viewers or our listeners a little bit about yourself in your own words. Okay. Um, so first of all, um, I'm Tanvi Shah. I am a chef and a nutritionist. I support sustainable fashion and love art and textiles. I love creating and being creative, uh, be it with my home decor, plating my food, uh, my fabrics, uh, my outfits, all of that. And uh, uh, primarily, I see myself uh, first as a mother. Uh, I have been told to put that aside and see myself as an individual. But, uh, you know, for some reason, maybe I'll grow into that as I am an empty nester now. But having said that, I, I see myself first in a mother's role. That's been a priority ever since I had my first baby and then my second. Um so that was it for me. And uh, I love a nice home. I like well-plated food. I put effort into uh, the small nuances of life. Wonderful, Tanvi. Wonderful. And um, like I said, yes, you've, you've covered some of the hats that you've done. But um, I've seen you're more than even what you just described. You're an author, an entrepreneur, a health food enthusiast. Where did this journey begin for you? Like, what was the first step into all these fields? So um, I will uh, pause, rewind. I love those two words because a very dear friend of mine wrote a book called Pause, Rewind. And th those two words keep playing uh, with things that I discuss. Uh, so hi, Nawaz. I do want to tell her uh, a warm hello. And mm -hmm. we're going live on TV, by the way, in, in day after tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, uh, no, day after. We're going uh, to be on air soon. So that's on my mind. But yeah, I must tell you that my journey began, <clears throat> as I rewind my thoughts, um, in childhood as somebody that was never allowed to enter the kitchen. Oh, because I come from a very conservative family. Right. I'm very spiritual. I'm not cultish about anything. But I came from a very, very spiritual, conservative Hindu family. Right. They believe in astrological charts. And my birth astrological chart had told me to stay away from fire. So in Gujarati, as they say, Ag no ghat che means I have the potential of being injured or you know harmed by fire and a very funny twist to that is growing up I used to always have without knowing this I just got to know this not too long ago I mean you know maybe a decade ago but at, growing up I didn't know this but I used to get recurrent dreams about being in a small hut in what looked like rural Japan in some very um, rustic wooden hut which is on a stilt Right. And there's a volcano erupting and the lava is coming towards me and it comes up to six feet away and then withdraws again. So for whatever that means, I used to get those dreams on and off. And I'd always tell my wow. mother and she wouldn't say anything to me. Right. Well, so never allowed to enter the kitchen. So obviously like doing what I was not allowed to do. 
which is go to the kitchen. And, uh, uh, you know, I never really cooked how to make any staples. I never really learned how to cook any staples growing up. Uh, my first tryst in the kitchen was in my college in Switzerland. Where I'd got a small plate and I used to cook all sorts of, you know, Indian masaledar things and Maggie and all of that for my friends, make sandwiches for them. And mm -hmm. I love doing that. So I love mm -hmm. feeding and serving people from the get go. Mm -hmm. from those mm -hmm. And um, I ended doing my master's in economics and a master's in computer science, because again, came from that very, very Indian ethos of no arts, nothing, got to do math or science. Right, right. Um, so I got my master's in computer science. I um, worked at IBM in corporate America uh, in, in the marketing field, though, uh, mm -hmm. for technology. So the mm -hmm. key is that I understand technology, which is why I was hired. And um, well, and then I come back to India. I had a completely arranged marriage. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting. And it's a very interesting tidbit for foreigners to hear this, you know, and I know you have an international audience. So the thing is, he was the first and last guy I met. But wow. but I liked him. I liked him uh -huh. the very day I met him. And, um, you know, we of course we were allowed to meet. And of course it was that regular chemistry uh, that people that date when they fall in love had. Right. Uh, and, uh, yep. And then, and then I was married because I really wanted to start a family and have kids. Wow. And, uh, so I've always worked with some sort of blinders on when I like something or decide to do something. I generally mm -hmm. can't see beyond that. So wow. I just get immersed in what I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I shifted back to India, uh, IBM was kind enough to offer me a fantastic challenging position that was you know uh more than what I did in the U.S. but I couldn't take that on because I had to pay attention to my family which I wanted to so uh I didn't want to travel as much they, they offered me a position where I had to train in Singapore and be based out of Bangalore so right. I I was in Bombay so and at the time IBM didn't have a setup in Bombay right why so uh shifted back to Bombay and then started uh -huh. dancing in uh, textiles and all out of pure interest. And Lovely. Then started an accessory line, uh, doing fabric accessories, completely out of hobby. Like right. absolutely nothing to do with any professional thought of developing professionally because, you know, my home was my first priority and then I had the babies one by one. But before mm -hmm. I had my daughter, Mira, um, the textile business really took off. I mean, not the textiles, the accessory business took off. Right. Uh, my ethos was clean, simple. I wanted to show off the textile and the weave or have a unique selling point like a hand-skilled artisan's particular craft. In India, I thought everything just was very complicated. It spoke mm. about 30 things and one thing. Mm. So for me, it was a very clean aesthetic when uh -huh. I started and, uh, you know, sort of giving it a shout out, giving the craft that I want to show a shout out. Right. And that's what was the USP of my piece. So anyway, I grew with the retailers in India. I was at 28 retailers, B2B only. Wow. Uh -huh. B2C, I had the time. Right. Uh, never ever did an exhibition in my life. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh, yeah, so up until about five, eight years ago, you know, then India had GST that took up, my business took a hit because of that, because my Ouch. margins were low. And right. then COVID happened. So a lot mm. of stores were down and I only did B2B. So during mm -hmm. COVID, um, while it was a real, real curse for a lot of people, and I have complete compassion for them, for me, mm -hmm. it was a blessing. I cooked every day for my family. I got certified as a nutritionist. <clears throat> really? I studied science. And uh, I got much fitter. Uh, I shed uh, fat, gained muscle. Wow. Um, I'm not going to talk about weight loss. I'm going to talk about getting fitter. Right. Thank you. And I used my knowledge uh, of nutrition and being a nutritionist and being able to see the macros and 
counting the calories intuitively then by then, by the end of it, because of my uh, precision while studying it. Um, I use that knowledge to cook, to cook my meals Wonderful. for myself and my family. And I lost 20 kilos of fat, but unnecessary <sighs> visceral fat while maintaining my muscle, hair, skin, teeth. And wow. my, uh, because, you know, at this age, after you've menopause, I'm 52 and I uh, menopause at 48. And wow. so it was a blessing for me because I could use that time to, you know, strengthen my body. So the load is off my joints because I don't have that estrogen protecting my joints anymore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, my husband, uh, you know, who's a complete foodie, lost 25 kilos so in pounds, that's 25 times 2.2. 2. So, wow. you know, the the uh it was it was just fantastic because I felt like it was a sabbatical mm -hmm. almost, but but not because I was working and studying, and then I um had that precious time with both my kids. Right. And, uh it was just can't tell you enough about how much of a blessing it was wow. so having said that i got very active on digital media something i knew nothing about during uh -huh. covid during covid uh, okay yeah because uh -huh. i was posting what i was cooking every day my friends wanted to see what i was eating yes, so yes. I, this was a good way to reach out to them other than whatsapp because you know at least here everybody got to see it and even your certification tanvi was during covid right your your nutritionist yes okay all right i um, actually any... studied design thinking as well i Ooh. got certified as well in design thinking <clears throat> which has helped me a lot uh, for every decision right so i highly right recommend that course as well to anybody that wants to get an all rounded sort of uh, perspective on their decision right. making right Okay, wonderful. And um, so then from from the time of COVID and, and putting yourself out on social media, which was a new platform for you um, at that point, you've taken it to another level altogether. So there's a whole load of the entrepreneurial side that I would love to touch with you in terms of cooking. Okay, so um, I know where this inspiration is coming from right now, but tell us more about your line of dips and uh, tell us more because there's dips and pickles and I might have missed something. So go ahead, Tanvi, and tell us more about your advent, um, entrepreneurial adventures. So so all of that, the dips and pickles actually was started uh, to teach my children uh, how to cook basic things and how to create a small business because uh, we uh, had gone to the Golden Temple in Amritsar. Right. right. And they have the langar there. Yes. Uh -huh. And for your foreign audience, a langar is basically a social service where you sit and you're fed and you eat a nutritionally balanced vegetarian meal mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. by volunteers who cook and feed out of love and right. devotion. And Right. And, and feed thousands of people per day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the ethos of wanting to serve without expectation. So uh, that was my first tryst with seeing uh, social service at that level with my children. I had seen it without them. Right. But... For my children, it was fantastic. It was awakening. And my son at the time was super, super small, very young. And he said to me, mom, why can't we do this in Bombay? There's so many poor children and there's so many animals on the street. I said, well, I'll look into it. And then I forgot all about it. And then uh, in that same time frame, we were in England together. With I was in England with my kids. And again, Veer said to me, my son is Veer, my daughter is Meera. And Lovely. Veer said to me, that why can't we do this in Bombay? And, you know, this was coming again and again from him. Right. I right. thought, well, you know, let's do something about it. But I'm not going to just be one of those people that says, well, you know, I can afford giving my kids a few hundred rupees, a few thousand rupees, give it to them. Let's go buy. What are they going to learn from it? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why don't you use your time right. for this cause? Why don't you work right. for it? Right. It's very easy to get some money from your parents, you know? 
<clears throat> and parents also sometimes are trigger friendly to give it away. Uh, <laughs> uh, really to satisfy their souls that they made their child happy. But I think it's yeah. a lose-lose situation. I don't think that's a win-win situation. So I uh, said to them that, well, you know, then why don't you work for the money? Do something, mm -hmm. earn some money. And then with your hard-earned money, you help people. Mm -hmm. Because helping people with others, your parents' money, is not going to give you the right uh, lesson mm -hmm. in life. So then mm -hmm. I decided to see what can I do with them. So I said, fine, I like to cook. Come to the kitchen with me. Let's make some dips and pickles and we'll sell them in our network. That's all clean home cooked food. People will buy mm -hmm. it and we pay it pricely. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Price it uh, fairly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, of course, uh, we got into only the accounting bit because he was enamored by the, uh, the, the finances. Bit, but of course, my daughter Mira and all her friends actually. And I had a lot of neighbor's kids coming to my house. And we wow. had a blast and we'd make these. And I actually even took them grocery shopping wholesale, uh, two markets far away, uh, you know, in Dadar and all these other suburbs of Bombay where the uh, prices were wholesale and they could actually see the vegetable market and, you know, buy vegetables <clears throat> in a way that would be profitable for them. Mm -hmm. And came back and taught them how to make some local Gujarati pickles, oil-free, uh, uh, you know, th that were fresh. And then I taught them how to make your basic dips, like a hummus, a tatsiki, a pesto. And, and they loved it. And they were eating it. And they were eating this clean food. So, you know, really, we killed so many targets with one stone because it was literally. Lovely. What's the your brand called? Handy. So at the time, we just called it Cook for a Cause. There was no brand. Oh, we were just, okay. We were just collecting money to be mm -hmm. able to help poor kids. Then we found an orphanage, gave it, to, we we were raising almost 16 to 20,000 rupees per weekend, which is a lot of money for these wow. children. Yes. And then we went uh, and, and, and I started getting calls because people thought I was doing it for a living. And nice. I started getting orders for it. I said, no, you know, this is just a weekend project once every two months with the kids. We're not, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not doing this. You know, I don't do this uh, commercially at all. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it was good feedback to know that people liked it. And then, um, you know, we found an orphanage, donated to them. Uh, come to find out a few months later when I took the kids to meet the kids we had helped, they were not allowing us to meet the girls. I don't want to name it. I don't want to defame anyone, but I was a little put off because I was afraid that it was not put to good use there. And, you know, mm, we... mm. so then I started looking up places where we could really, really help. That was authentic, which is when I came across the Akshay Patra Foundation. Mm -hmm. I never leave any interview or any TV uh, sort of episode without taking the name at least once because they inspired us uh, with the quality and quantity and the impact Literally, this is an impact interview. It's one of the mm -hmm. most impactful NGOs I have come across. And Wonderful. so then we decided that we would uh, write checks to them once we collected money. And so we did. Mm -hmm. So that's the journey. Then we published a book after publishing a book with my daughter. Um, during COVID, I had a friend that has a hydroponic farm and another dear friend that specializes in hydroponics. Uh -huh. And um, the lettuces and clean eats there. Wow. And where is this? This is inside uh, in, in India. Bombay, uh, in India. Yeah, in, in India Bombay. somewhere. Okay. Uh, Outside oh, in Bombay. Bombay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I started doing vinaigrettes and dressings just out of goodwill to help them send their greens across to their subscribers. And then they started getting calls for the dressings and the vinaigrettes. Mm hmm. <laughs> and that's when I went commercial with the vinaigrettes. They sell nationwide. It's called the Millennial wow. Kitchen. We have vinaigrettes with a very, very clean uh, recipe, each of them, uh, made right. with authentic cold-pressed olive oil, authentic Italian vinegar, wow. uh, free, well-flavored. And of course, I keep posting recipes on how to use them. And then we do dressings. We have pop-ups where we do our dips and bowls. And uh, yeah, working on on uh, lots of other things health-related to take out the ethos of this hyper-palatable eating 
mm-hmm. from the minds of all, be it kids or adults. So that's the goal. Wonderful, Tanvi. And over to uh, looking at food um, in India in general. Okay, so you've talked about using um, Italian vinegars and things like that. I know um, at least in the urban space, ingredients are much more accessible right now. Okay, but exactly. taking taking a look at when you move back and how you feel the Indian scene has changed in terms of food. Okay, how has that changed in your opinion, whether it's the way we're consuming food, whether it's our awareness, whether it's going local, whatever it is that you'd like to touch upon, how do you feel we've changed in India in terms of the food scene? So uh, I personally love local authentic food, <clears throat> local authentic food. And that's uh, something that I've always been extremely passionate about. Uh, even in my own home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I love authentic eats. Like if I go into Kolapuri cuisine, then I will just do everything, you know, that's so, so local with it. Uh, right. If it's Persian cuisine, these are some of the cuisines that I've been obsessed about in the past. Of right. course, Gujarati. Uh, I love Himachali, uh, Thalis, Gharwali, Thalis. I go into the very, very deep science of each cuisine for its authenticity right okay now in India what I feel is that of course the urban cities you have a food that's bastardized okay in a in a, in a bad way which I don't like mm -hmm. either mm -hmm. stick to the authenticity mm -hmm. or create fusions that are clean mm. I see really really messy fusions of food that are you know loaded with uh, non-essential fat, high glycemic carbs, processed mm -hmm. ingredients, mm -hmm. and uh, people are uh, <clears throat> so, uh, patronizing it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is why then that drives the commercials, you know, for for them. And so then, literally yeah. at at a commercial level, exhibiting the dark side of capitalism. Mm -hmm. uh, does right because then people are having things that are not good for them and people are selling mm -hmm. more things that are not good for them so in for me it's literally like I just want to stick to what I think is good and clean and if the right. audience doesn't like it so be it they should grow to like it because it is something that they can grow to like because they've been weaned on this culture of mm. hyper food and I want to wean them to a culture of clean food that's delicious that they deem delicious from their heart and soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful Tanvi and um, you mentioned you co-authored a book with your daughter that's special that was really that is really special tell us a little bit more because what I loved about whatever I know about your book is that it's easy recipes not a million ingredients that I can't procure easily I mean it's easy a couple of in ingredients and I can do it even not being in India okay so Absolutely. I can so I'll let you tell me a little bit about um, a book that I think is pretty great go ahead <gasps> Tanvi. thank you have you seen it I've seen the covers and I've seen what you featured on your Instagram. I still have to get my physical It's available copy. on Kindle and as an ebook for, for you in Switzerland. We had a problem with, uh, you know, getting the paperbacks in Europe and America. Wonderful. But uh, yeah, you can get it on uh, Amazon, I think, in Switzerland. You're on Zurich. So yeah, you should be able to get it. And uh, my, my, my thing is that, you know, the whole book came about <clears throat> as a pet project again with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was a part of a fantastic organization with a dynamic woman called Namita Thapar here in India. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was called the Youth Entrepreneurs Academy. Right. It was a US franchise, but now she runs it as her own. Right. Under another team, I think Ascent or Ascent. But it was fantastic. Uh, she mm -hmm. was the brains behind this whole thing. And mm -hmm. she got kids together to create business projects that they were passionate about. So mm -hmm. Meera and I just done Cook for a Cause. And, right. um, you know, we were guided, of course, on, on thinking about how we can make a long-term impact. So right. we wanted to do something for the Akshay Patra Foundation. So we decided to pledge the royalty of this book to them. And we Lovely. also decided 
to talk about them in the book. So everybody that buys the book hears about this foundation and what they do. Right. And uh, we wanted the book to be real. We mm -hmm. wanted the book to be easy. And we wanted the book to have clean eats because that's how we ate at home. Mm -hmm. And Mia used to come to the kitchen with me a lot when she had the time in the evenings. And right. a lot of recipes, some of them are created by her, like the sriracha chicken, mm -hmm. uh, like the, the, the few recipes that she completely like created on her own when right. we were experimenting in the kitchen. Now, the fun mm -hmm. thing is that when we were experimenting for the recipes, we both lost weight. Wow. But we both felt fitter. Mm -hmm. We lost mm -hmm. weight, but we didn't lose weight in a way that we were feeling low on energy or unfit. Yes. So I actually logged that part of that right. journey of how we were eating in those days. Right. Like breakfast and dinner. Wonderful. That made us feel more energetic. Wonderful. Wonderful. And... um. You know, again, we were again guided to, at that time, I had not done design thinking. So had I done design thinking, I would have thought about it exactly the way we were guided right? Uh, by Namita and her mentors, which is, solve uh -huh. a, she said, you know, you need to solve a problem when you're doing something. So we wanted our book to solve a problem. We mm -hmm. wanted people to have the book as a go-to if they didn't know what to make, mm -hmm. if they were amateurs. Or mm -hmm. if they were a professional that wants some inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We wanted a book to appeal to all genres so that, you know, the more we sold, the more awareness about Akshay Patra we could uh, share. And the royalties would be higher. So right. what we actually did was uh, we created four recipes. Right organic, easy, five-ingredient vegetarian recipes out of which two are vegan. One is vegan, uh -huh. the, the hummus, and, and the rest can be made vegan by replacing it with vegan ingredients, but they're all vegetarian, essentially. And Love how it. you can use those four dips to create 45 wholesome meals. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, you know, all the way from a college student to a homemaker, to a professional cook, to an amateur, because, you know, we literally tell you where you can source the ingredients, what utensils you need. We've kept the utensils really simple. All you need is like right. four or five utensils. That's it. Right. You need five ingredients to start with. And that in itself can be a whole meal. Mm -hmm. And then Wonderful. of course, show you plating tips. All the photography was done in my home, in my crockery. It was all natural. I didn't want to show you anything processed. So when we did the quesadillas, <clears> for <throat> we didn't use tortillas we bought from outside. We mm -hmm. use dharki roti, we use parathas, we use rotis, we use millet rotis that I make at home. Wonderful. So. Wonderful. Lovely, Tami. And that's how I discovered you. I um, I saw something on uh, your garden that you have a little uh, balcony patch. That's yeah, fabulous. You had your, your capsicums that you were growing. And there was a, 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 a video or a reel that you created on millets and healthy eating. Um, and that's how I found you. So I'm going to take you now to social media and ask you, has it been a bane or a boon for you? Okay. How has it worked for you or how has it not worked for you? And how hard is it to break in um, to a market relatively saturated, at least in India, with a lot of people showcasing their recipes, showcasing, uh, you know, their skills on Instagram? How hard is it for you to make your space and um, create uh, awareness uh, for whatever you're doing and keep your niche? How is it? So... I'll, I'll answer your first question. <clears throat> is that, is it a bane or a boon? I would say it's a boon for me. Mm -hmm. um, because I've been able to reach out to so many people, a nobody, a homemaker, nondescript, non-celeb. An ordinary person has been able to reach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the ones that are interested in what she has to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The second thing is that... Um, how tough is it? It's super tough because one is mm. I'm very, very true to my own intention and focus on what I want to show. 
Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. don't showcase any recipes for eyeballs. I do it because I wanted to reach people to uh, help them and uh, uh, to give them ideas to create. But at the same time, when you say how difficult it is, again, I put that difficulty to competition. There is so much out there which is shown, which is, you know, harmful for you. Now, that's the mm-hmm. main. And mm-hmm. people follow these handles in hordes, yes. right? Mm-hmm. So many million and hundreds and thousands of followers. And, you know, and I'm thinking, do they even eat what they show? Yes, yes, yes. So mm-hmm. that's where I come in. And yeah, is it tough? Of course it is. You know, it is. But but it's joyous for me as well, because I love sharing about what I do. And I love sharing about what I cook. And mm-hmm. I love uh, sharing my food. So. Thank you. Wonderful. And Tanvi, before I say goodbye to you, I mean, there's so much more I want to ask you, but um, I will have to let you go. Uh, yes. But before I say goodbye to you, what would you like to see um, happen personally, professionally? Uh, what would you like to manifest uh, in the near and far future? Well, the truth is, that's a fantastic question. And I really appreciate you uh, letting me share this. I manifest that people, kids, adults, when they're thinking about clean food, they replace the big M of McDonald's with TMK, the millennial kitchen. Oh, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, wonderful. Tanvi, how lovely. That's my one takeaway from today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tanvi, it's been such a very big pleasure speaking with you today. Um, I've enjoyed our conversation. It just felt like um, I've known you for years on end. Um, and I look forward to actually meeting way, you. Yeah. And I'm sure our paths will actually cross in person um, in the near future. When I finally come down to Mumbai. Uh, come soon. Again. You're invited. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Tanvi, thank you very, very much. Wishing you you all the very, very best in whatever you decide to, or however you decide to take your journey forward. We're looking out. We're waiting and watching to see how your impact manifests um, into a larger scale. Thanks so very much. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Bye.